See that at the bottom? That's right folks, Game Freak. And not just the studio, but the actual creators of Pokemon, Ken Sugimori and Satoshi Tajiri are behind this criminally underrated Japanese exclusive Mega Drive title from 1995 that for reasons lost to history never left the shores of East Asia. I could only speculate as to why that was. The PlayStation 1 and Sega's own Saturn were out and Sega's priority obviously lay with the 32-bit system. But we can't change gaming's past only the future. And if you want yours to be brighter, I suggest you get your sweaty mitts on Pulse Man. Now this game came about at the tail end of a period of gaming that's come to be known as the mascot era, where developers entered into a cute and cuddly arms race to develop the next big star with mass merchandising potential. And while a lot of YouTubers, who really ought to know better, will tell you that these were dark days in console gaming, as usual, it falls to me to quash the rumours and dispel the myths, because look behind the transparent hype and bluster that was the order of the day, and you'll discover an Aladdin's cave of cracking 16-bit software. From the decent, bubsy, Vectorman, Cool Spot and Boogerman, to bona fide classics such as Earthworm Jim, Rocket Knight Adventures, Restar, and the subject of today's video, Pulse Man. Now the big gimmick of the game is your use of electricity, not just in how you attack, but integral to how the game is played. With you building a static charge by dashing, then with the tap of A, you end up bouncing all over the shop. To becoming a spark and travelling to and fro on electric wires in a lawnmower man cyber world, this game is up there with Sonic, Gunstar Heroes and Alien Soldier as one of the best platform exclusives that the Mega Drive ever saw. It can take a while to get used to the playing style of constantly being on the move to build up a charge, especially in tight boss encounters, like this prick. But these are minor annoyances in an otherwise standout example of what made 16-bit gaming so exciting and why so many of us continue to indulge our passion for the past and look for titles just like this, that we had virtually no hope of acquiring as kids. It is, or was, still available for purchase on the Wii's virtual console but not other platforms as far as I'm aware of. So emulation is your best bet, unless of course you're minted and can afford the eyebrow raising prices some eBay sellers are asking for. I don't know how they sleep at night. But I'm gonna wrap this up right here, so thank you for watching, my name's Grey, this has been my look at a game from the same stable as the multi-billion dollar franchise of Pokemon. So more videos up soon, thank you for watching and goodbye.